Hi, today we are going to look at problem solution leads uh, by analyzing one of Mel Martin's uh, relatively famous uh, advertisements called the Chef's Secret Cookbook. Uh, this is a pretty short ad. It was a space ad, so it was ran in, in, in newspapers. And as you can see, it has all the typical elements of, uh, of most of the old school direct response copywriting ads out there. However, uh, I wanted to uh, show this as an example because it's a great example of a problem solution lead, uh, which means that this is for people who are let's say they're slightly warmed up uh, to whatever we're offering them, but they haven't heard about us before. They don't necessarily know that there's a real solution to their problem, but they definitely know that they have a problem. Uh, and these types of leads work great for Facebook ads, for example, or landing pages, or maybe even advertorials. Uh, and the reason why is because people already have strong emotions related to these things they have uh, they, they feel like a failure in some sense uh, they are struggling with something for quite a while they cannot really crack the code on how to do something and this example is uh, was uh, aimed at uh, housewives who were enjoying cooking and doing cooking but didn't really like uh, succeed with it as much as they wanted to and that's why the it's interesting because there's there's kind of like two headlines here. So this is the product name, uh, which kind of also serves as the headline, but this is the, the primary headline. It says, for people who are almost but not quite satisfied with their own cooking and can't figure out what's missing. So as you can see immediately, it's something that immediately qualifies people who, uh, who know that they have a problem. They know that they're struggling with cooking uh, and they've tried several potential solutions in the past, but nothing really, you know, worked. And I know this from, for example, speaking to my own mother, because uh, she uh, makes a lot of bread, homemade bread. And, uh, you know, when I talk on the phone with her, she often says that, you know, she tried a new recipe or something, but it didn't work. And it's, she can't really figure out how to, you know, get that special type of artisanal bread uh, texture inside the bread itself no matter how much he, she, she's trying to like like hack the recipe and everything uh, she couldn't figure it out and I think that's the that's the mindset that this ad is trying to uh, convey here and uh, the good thing about it as, and the smart thing about it is that it acknowledges that people might have tried other recipes before they might have tried various uh, cooking hacks but they uh, haven't really managed to figure it out yet. And one of the main reasons why is because they don't know the secret of real chefs, okay? They don't know the secret. And I can totally imagine this working because my mother also like sometimes feels like she tried so many things from all these various sources on the internet, but, but there must be some type of secret to like uh, master bread makers who can make those artisanal breads because those breads exist. So then what's the secret? How can I how can I learn it? And that's exactly what this specific ad and more specifically the lead of it achieves. So we start out with a strong qualification. So for people who are almost but not quite. So this is relatable, satisfied with their own cooking uh, and can't figure out what's missing. So. I like this figure out part because it presupposes that they've been trying to solve this problem before, but they don't know how, and there's still a missing link. And then right after the headline, you know, we have uh, kind of like a, uh, a picture of the book itself, and it's called The Chef's Secret Cookbook, so it really goes well with this theme, and it presupposes the secret of the masters. And we see a guy on it which seems like, I don't know, uh, a chef with some big mustache and seems interesting okay and we know that there's a lot of emotional baggage and sense of dis disappointment that is tied to uh to this this problem uh, especially in the target audience this uh, target audience that this ad was aimed at uh housewives who uh do almost all the cooking and they really want to like make a great impression to uh to make delicious food for their family and also very important a lot of people for, forget this to basically um, 
get higher on the hierarchy of housewives because there's a fierce competition between them. Who's like the best housewife? Who makes the best cake? And, and, and whoever makes it is going to become the, uh, the talk of everybody on the next book club meeting or something. So always, whenever you're writing copy, always try to like dimensionalize how uh, all these feelings and all these problems really, really come through in the target audience's day-to-day uh, lives okay because they're not like you know most people try to target uh, this audience on Facebook for example by saying that I don't know middle-aged women between uh, 30 to 50 who uh, make an av- who, whose family uh, m- takes home an average of eighty thousand dollars per year and they live uh, in, a, in a like suburb neighborhood and uh, they have uh, one and a half cars on average per family or something. So I get it why people want to try to build a customer avatar based on this, but you always want to look beyond this. You want to look at what really is the interest of the target audience and who, uh, like, how do they really feel about all these things. And problem solution leads are all about feeling and all about like agitating that specific feeling. So never forget this. So after this little headline, we have a bunch of bullets, which although we're talking about Mel Martin, who was definitely a master of bullets and fascinations, these aren't necessarily like like real uh, modern, super effective fascinations to me. They are fascinations because they tease something on specific pages. So they have a curiosity element, but... uh, it's like it's more like giving specific examples to people. This just qualifies people. It's just these fascinations are kind of basically trying to like put out various uh, emotional situations that the housewife uh, might have found herself in, and then tries to like hook them with all these different types of of of, of triggers. So maybe you know their crepes are delicious but too heavy. Maybe this applies to them, maybe not. I don't know. But the next one, maybe, you know, they have trouble with cooked shrimp. Uh, or maybe, uh, you know, their their fried eggplants taste oilier, oilier than it should. So, uh, you know, there must be something from here which are relatively... Well, some of them are relatively common, but some of them are more uh, exclusive type of uh, types of foods. But there must be something that really resonates with the target audience. And once there is, that's when we hook them emotionally. And then all the emotions, all the uh, shame and uh, and feeling of defeat and disappointment that's actually uh, tied up in that specific customer avatar gets unleashed. And that's why they want to read uh, the uh, ad after it. So uh, that's what these these uh, fascination and, and bullets do uh, here. They're not like the, the most effective, uh, but they definitely do a great job of like building curiosity of what's inside the book. So then we have a, a testimonial here. Uh, and I like that the, the testimonial includes something like it's for the intelligent person because, you know, the reader just reads it and says, well, I'm an intelligent person. So this probably is for me, right? Then we have the, uh, the the second kind of headline, the name of the product, which is the Chef's Secret Cookbook. And again, just like I said, the secret is is very is is very uh, it's a primary thing here, and uh, it's gonna be get repeated, uh, gonna get repeated several times later on as well. Secret, secret, secret. Like even here, like it's inside information because you know these problem aware people think that you know there must be something that that's missing i tried so many things but there must be something that it's missing and i can't figure out what it is then uh mel martin very smartly like provides a usp so this can definitely be a good part of a lead so let's just recap what a lead has to do it first of all it has to grab attention it has to qualify people it has to build an emotional rapport with people it has to tease something and 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 build uh desire for whatever you're you're trying to sell at the same time and it's also uh immediately uh, like positioning this as a better alternative to others. Because at this point, a lot of readers are asking like, okay, but why should I care? Why should I read this? I've I've, uh, I've read so many cookbooks before. How is this different? And that's why uh, we go into the uh, unique selling proposition and the unique mechanism, which is basically um, 
which basically comes from the persona of the chef. And we go into a mini story about the chef. Not too long, but like his name is Louis Sathmari. And uh, that's definitely a Hungarian name, uh, which has kind of like an exotic factor. Because some people, maybe they've heard about the... Even though Hungary is a very small country, but they might have heard about the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And, you know, they have this, this image, this mental representation maybe that these Hungarian older uh, like master chefs or something, they are, they have this aura of being more royal. They, they have this, uh, this representation around them that centers around like uh, aristocracy and, uh, and, and, and some type of secret that's not really available to the new world Americans, okay? And I think that's why this is, this is uh, effective. I don't know whether Mel Martin did this uh, intentionally or not, but that's why I'm getting and that's what I would be uh, highlighting for sure if I were to write this ad. So it's basically like the secrets of a foreign craftsman, okay? And then if you learn this secret, then the main benefits that you get out of it will be, and then he lists three uh, specific uh, benefits. Uh, it's like your cooking is gonna be more fun, which is good. Like, what does this mean actually? It means that, you know, uh, life is gonna be easier for that specific uh, housewife. And this is gonna result in, in more elegant type of cooking, which again means that she's gonna have the confidence to uh, maybe uh, cook more or better or or not feel uh, anxiety whenever doing something like this. And the third benefit listed here is is that everything is going to taste wondrous. So I think this what this exactly means is that she's going to get more approval and that's what she wants ultimately more praise, more approval, more more uh, being the talk of all the other housewives that she's the best, okay So make no mistake there's a there's a very very, real and hard uh, social hierarchy here as well. It's just like when we were like primates, just like there is a social hierarchy to chimpanzees, there's a social hierarchy to the world of men and to the world of women, and nowadays to the world of everybody, okay? Because everything's so uh, mixed together nowadays. But there's still a social hierarchy regarding specific crafts, for example, even in copywriting. Um, then, you know, uh, we have copy elements that uh, imply that this works for everyone. Uh, it says that, you know, uh, these exotic seasoning, like you don't need to know any specific skills or something, any specific training. Uh, you just have to know the secret. Okay. Uh, that's the, that's the main, main thing here. And then you won't have to struggle with it too hard, but your results are going to be exotic. And I think that this is the end of the lead here. So again, the lead is the first like 100 to like 500 words of a promotion. And its aim is to immediately get people interested in the rest of the promotion. And it's very, very important because like 80% of people never really make it past the lead. So uh, they read the headline, they read a few things, but they never really read the, the, the rest of the stuff. And if they don't read the copy, they won't convert. So it's very important for your lead to uh, get the right prospect at the right time with the right emotional hook, set the right tone. Uh, and that's why it's not so easy, but uh, hopefully this uh, problem solution lead uh, definitely gave you a few examples and ideas on how you can also do this uh, in your own funnels, in your own promotions as well. Uh, you might want to also check out uh, my, my uh, last two videos. One was about offer leads and one was about promise leads. You know, those are made for specific situations then, uh, uh, but, but, but they complement this really, really well. And if you want to learn more about leads, I really recommend Michael Masterson's uh, great book called Great Leads, which uh, lists six different types of leads uh, with a bunch of examples and, and descriptions. And, and, and he goes way deeper than I did here, uh, but uh, you might want to check it out because uh, uh, that's definitely one of the best copywriting books out there that I've read. So yeah, thanks again for watching this. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, Stay tuned for the next one.